Okay, so for question number five, again, my preference here is to always try guess and check. So make two sets of binomials. Think about what the first part of FOIL has to be to give you this. Think about what the last part of FOIL has to be to give you this. And then check to make sure that the outer part of your FOIL combined with your inner part of your FOIL gives you minus 6mx squared. But I'm going to assume that I have tried that and I'm just not thinking of the right number combinations or maybe I think this doesn't factor. So I'm going to try the um, factor by grouping thing. So the number out front here would be a, that would be 1. b is going to be negative 6 and c is going to be 9. We're just looking at the coefficients there. And so factor by uh, or the, I'm sorry, product sum method. I'm supposed to find two numbers that multiply to give me whatever a times c is. And a times c would be 9 in this question, 1 times 9. But add up to b, which is negative 6. So there's not a million things that multiply to 9. There's 1 and 9, negative 1 and negative 9, 3 and 3, or negative 3 and negative 3. I would pick the number combination that also adds up to negative 6. And then the way we use these, this is the key. This is not part of your answer yet. I, I wish it was. That would be great. But the way we use this is the way we split up the B term. So this stays the same. This stays the same. But instead of saying minus 6 of these guys, I'm going to say I have minus 3 of them, minus 3 of them. They just happen to be m x squared. And since I have met this requirement, the two numbers I use multiply to a times c but add up to b. The adding up to b ensures that I didn't change the question, I just changed the way it looks. But I picked out the two numbers that multiply to a times c versus just two random numbers because now this guy should finish perfectly with factor by grouping. Group the first two, group the last two, if this is a minus sign in the middle, he's now being distributed, so you need to switch the last sign. Take a GCF out of the left two. This minus is this minus. Take a GCF out of the right two. And one of the nicest things about this method is at the end, these two are supposed to be the same. So if they're not, we know something is off. That's half of our answer. And then these, the leftover parts make up the rest of my answer. And I can always foil it. Foiling it should take it back to the original question if you needed to check. So again, this is another reason, I didn't mention this in the notes, but another reason I like factor by grouping method. It doesn't matter if there's two variables, m's and x's, it doesn't make the process any harder. you got to find the right two number combinations, split it up. If we've got minus 6 of these, we're splitting up into minus 3 and minus 3. I don't really care that they're mx squareds. The only part of the question that makes that harder is the GCF is a tiny bit harder with those extra variables. But the oh, right here. Oh, I. Okay, so this is, I guess this is a good lesson. The fact that these are the same gives me a lot of confidence, and usually it helps you figure out if you have one mistake, but it looks like I actually have two mistakes that balanced out and I didn't catch it. When I factored out a negative three here, or I'm sorry, factored out a three, this should have been a three, right? Three times three is what gives you nine. Then they don't match up over here mx squared times this is supposed to give me that. So this was supposed to be a 3, 2. So we actually had an mx squared minus 3 and an mx squared minus 3. And so we might even call it mx squared minus 3 squared. Yeah. 
Thank you for catching that. So, I'm, I messed up both GCFs and it just happened to balance out where I didn't notice I made a mistake. So be careful there.